But while people are coming in, we're calling this Fresh Start February. So maybe drop in the chat. What would, um, what do you want a fresh start on? What would you be uh, willing to kind of invest in yourself and move forward so you can get kind of a fresh start in some area? Just pop it in the chat. Uh-oh, nobody willing to commit? <laughs> there we go. More consistent. There you go. Fresh start with client growth. I hear you on that. That's the greatest thing about our business is, you know, every, every day is an opportunity. The question was, this is, we're calling this Fresh Start February. So you came to the call kind of knowing that was the title. And so what do you want a fresh start with this February? All right. Well, we are glad you are here. We had our first call of um, the month. So it's the first Monday or yeah, first Monday of the month. So we do have our leadership call right after this. And just a reminder, we shifted our time first, always going to be the first Monday and we're piloting doing it right after this call from eight to eight 30. So if you've ever been um, an executive director or higher, we would love to have you on that call with us. Um, just a great open forum to, um, to talk as a leadership team. And that's if you've ever qualified at that rank. Um, but as we always do, you guys, before we bounce in and hop into what's next, we like to take a moment to reflect on um, January and the highlights. So we're going to pop a little video in. And what I want you to pay attention to is on the things in pink, we've indicated all the areas that we've had growth and we had significant growth last month, which is exciting. So Meg, I think you're going to cue us up with the audio and the video. So awesome. I don't know if you saw there was, there was a little toolbar over it, but significant increase, you guys, like people that earned the 3% bonus last month, a 200% increase in that. Um, we had 112% increase in our volume of clients and, and um, um, existing clients ordering. So um, so we're heading into that season, a season of growth, which is awesome, a season of you know optimism. And just something to pay attention to is all of those numbers are averages. So that means some of us, you know what I mean? Like when you talk about growth, like the 12 or 112% in growth, some coaches grew way more than that. Some coaches grew around that. Some coaches grew below that. And some coaches didn't grow or even shrunk. Um, but one thing we're kind of seeing is that there's this, this, we've been talking about energy and putting, you know, revive and thrive and, and those of us that are kind of feeling that surge of energy, I know that I certainly am and that optimism of the future, that is where we're starting to see the growth, um, and the things happening, the ones that are willing to kind of step outside the box, do things differently than we've done them before. So we've got a lot of opportunity ahead of us. Um, so I want to show just a couple quick things and we're going to hear from a couple of uh, different people tonight, but we've got some big stuff happening. So let me just do this real quick. Um, okay. So we announced um, that we are doing a pop-up incentive for our team. This is a February challenge. This is just within our team um, that we're doing as a leadership team, but we're going to do a drawing for any of us on our team who has $2,000 in FQV this month and earns the 3% bonus. So not only are you going to help more help people, you're going to earn more, you're going to be in that drawing for the extra $100. Um, if you earn the 5% bonus, you're going to get your name in the drawing twice. 
So we are excited to do that. We know that there's a lot of a lot of us that are going to be able to participate in that. And part of the reason that we're doing that is because of the information that we have for what's coming up in the summer. And this is typically what was convention. The information that we have now um, is that this is going to be, it's called Summer Event 2024, but this is going to be a qualifying event. So um, meaning that um, during this qualification period of December 1st, 23, and we have until May of 2024, um, that you would be meet these qualifications. And that would be an executive director or above for three of those six months. So any combination doesn't have to be three consecutive, but three of those six months, and you earn a client support bonus at least one time during those periods. The other way to do it is if you have the client support bonus um, at least three times and you maintain $2,000 FQV uh, volume for three of six months. So that is going to allow you, if you've got, that shows that you've got a business that's growing, um, you just might not be to that ED rank or not. So that is part of the reason for our incentive. Um, this is what we know so far. We will share more information, but we wanted to share and help you qualify for this. And as people qualify, we are gonna be celebrating and announcing that. Um, this will be probably the only event that we'll be able to get together this year. Um, last year, there was an event in Dallas um, that EDs and above were at, but that is, is not taking place. So this, this is gonna be the place to be. This week on Thursday is our monthly client community call. This is right for Eat, Live, and Be Healthy. So this week, as you're talking to your clients, um, perfect opportunity to invite them. Um, Lauren is um, coordinating this, Love Yourself to Health. So it's a great topic. Um, we've got so many more clients engaged, and I'm hoping you're seeing they are commenting, they are um, asking questions, they are introducing themselves, they are celebrating their wins. Our client group is picking up, so please help um, keep the momentum with that. And then lastly, I want you to know that next week on Team Time, we're going to have a special guest speaker, and it is Stephanie Nelson. Um, she is famous as the Coupon Mom, was a regular on um, Good Morning America, Oprah Winfrey, but she created an incredible business um, through an idea. And an idea that impacted many in ways she never expected. And she ran into obstacle after obstacle after obstacle. Um, so she's going to be our guest speaker next week. We are going to allow for about 10 to 15 minutes afterwards for Q&A with her. So just wanted you to know so you can mark your calendar for that. That is awesome. I'm really excited to hear from her and the business. You you all should go out and look for her on Instagram and research her a little bit. It is pretty incredible that she is going to talk to our team. And uh, so I, I can't wait to be there. I know you will want to be there, there and your team will want to be there as well. Uh, so tonight's Fresh Start February, and we have several coaches on right now that have given themselves a fresh start here in this new year of 2024. So we wanted to hear from a couple of coaches that made a shift and some pretty cool things have happened because of that. Um, Shauna, I know you have had a huge fresh start for, for you and your own health. Will you share with us? Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. I always forget to unmute myself. Um, okay. So I want to start off by saying external motivation versus autonomous motivation. It was my light bulb moment from chapter 1.3 in the Habits of Health book, and it's titled, Are You Really Ready to Change? So I had managed my weight well for about four years, and over the last two plus years, I've been on this slow climb to having put back on 40 pounds of the 87 I took off. And y'all, I don't even think I'd ever told Lori, who's my dearest friend, my coach, how much I had actually gained back until January 2nd, when I sent her my toes on the scales in tears. Big tip here, don't hide where you are from your coach ever. And did you hear that I said January 2nd? Y'all, I wasn't even gonna do the challenge. I had started so many times over the last couple of years and failed every time. And I realized I was trying to fix a problem. I had told myself I need to lose weight because I'm a coach. I really should lose weight to set a better example. 
I have to lose weight because I'm embarrassed. My clothes are way too tight. I can't wear my jeans on and on and on. But my light bulb moment was so much deeper. And I realized that when I read page 78 in the Habits of Health book, and I had read it before, but it just hit me differently this time. Autonomous motivation. I made it more about me and what was deep inside rather than all those external noises and things I was telling myself in my head. I committed to myself. I made a decision that this time I was not going to quit. And I was also not going to five in one ish my program. You know, we are usually the first person that we are willing to break a promise or a commitment to. Did you know that? Most of us honor our word and our commitments to other people, but we will let ourselves down in a heartbeat. And I made a commitment I wasn't going to do that this time. When I start that dialogue in my head, oh, just one bite. I really just want one bite of this. Or I've done so well so far, I'm just going to splurge a little bit. I remember, I want to feel good again. I want to like who I see in the mirror again. I want to feel more energy. I want to be myself again. But most of all, y'all hear this. I want to honor that girl that I fought so hard for six years ago to gain control of her health. I'm 14 pounds down as of this morning, and I still have another 30 to go, so I got a long way still. Um, and yes, that feels like such a long road to me, but I'm committed to honor the promise that I made to myself in tears on January 2nd. And listen, nothing tastes as good as keeping your word to yourself. Thank you. Wow, Shauna, your heart, your vulnerability, your words. Thank you. I know they served so many of us tonight um, and excited to see what this portion of your story looks like. I love how you, you shared that uh, you stopped hiding and you're committed to the process and committed to the outcome. So that's really beautiful. Uh, we're going to shift in here from another coach. And um, this is Sarah Kreider. So Sarah, will you pop off mute and share with us? You have had, and I've been able to watch you physically shrink in front of my eyes. And it's been just so incredible and so much fun to watch you. Will you share with us? Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, absolutely. Hey, everybody. Um, I'm excited to be on this call tonight um, because I also have been hiding for a long time. Um, I started playing years ago, um, and was able to keep my weight off until I had my second child, which now is almost three years ago. So for the last three years, I feel like I've just been going back and forth with not doing the plan the right way, or just kind of doing it my own way, which we all know does not work. Um, and so, um, last year I, um, it was probably around, Halloween, um, I had a conversation with my husband just saying, Hey, I, I really need to make a change. I'm really not happy with how I feel physically and, um, you know, just hiding from the community, hiding from what I know works, um, and just kind of got stuck in this dark cycle of just eating and drinking whatever I wanted. And I was like, this is what got me to where I was before I even knew Optivia. So, um, I remember Meg asking me one day, do you think you're going to go back all in in January? And I said, no, I'm just gonna, maybe I'll, maybe I'll just try to watch what I eat, which I was lying to myself because I, I I've done that before. Um, but I decided that for my 35th birthday this year, I'm going to give myself the gift of health back. And, um, I mean, really give myself the gift of health. I did dry January, which I've never done before. Um, didn't think I was going to make it through that. Um, I really enjoy my afternoon cocktail with my husband, unwinding after a long day with two kids. And to tell you, I can't explain in words how free it felt to get to January 31st and know, hey, I didn't cave. I didn't have one sip of alcohol and it felt really empowering. Um and for the first half of the month, I told myself I wasn't going to step on the scale, but that was a lie because I couldn't 
not look. Um, I felt things changing. And um, as of last Friday, I was down 19 pounds um, since January 2nd. So, I mean, I have just been chugging the water and eating the five fuelings and measuring leaning greens. I mean, I couldn't tell you the last time I measured a leaning green. So it's just, um, you know, it's, we know what works and it works because it works. And so when we try to throw our own, um, quirks in it, it, it stops working. So I'm really excited for the fresh start. I'm excited to keep going. I've got a ways to go to my goal, but, um, I, I feel free again. I feel like I can do it and you know, it's, it's pretty exciting. Wow. Wow. Sarah, the words, I feel free again. That was a gift to you and to every single person that's on this call. And I know there are some people that need that freedom again. So thanks for being a beacon of hope and light for everyone. Check out the the chat. There's some comments and a lot of love. Dee, I know you've got some good stuff for us tonight. I do. I do. And I just want to, you know, Sarah and Sean, I just want to say how, how like that's so moving and it's just such a great example, right? Uh, that you, we can any day pick a day to start again and how good you feel. And thank you for that raw transparency. Um, for everybody watching this, I want you to pull out a pencil right now or a pen. And I want you to write this quote down because I heard it yesterday in church. And it the, the quote is, unhealthy happens in the dark. Whether it's mentally or physically, it's what we're doing in the dark that is tearing us up or tearing us down. And so um, every one of us on this call probably has something <laughs> that we haven't talked to our coach about or that, you know what I mean? There's something that needs to be brought to light and anything brought to light, um, that's where healing happens and that's where transformation and growth happens. So we're going to do something a little different tonight. Um, I have been investing my time in watching the coach training series, the coach with excellent series. Um, even after 13 years of doing this, um, I watch these trainings and every single time I walk away with something, it's just the way it works. Just like you were on this call and there's something you need to hear. It happens to me too. Um, and David Bush spoke on this call and he had an incredible presentation. And so we are going to do a little watch party here and watch his training together because there's no way um, that I, or even Meg, who's 10 times more gifted in speaking than I am, could regurgitate it better than Dave Bush. So um, we're going to watch this together. And if you watched it, if you're here, please stay, please stay in touch, stay tuned, watch it um, and pay attention, not multitasking. And then if you did watch it on Saturday, um, watch it again, because I watched it three times and picked up something different every single time. So here we go. See, are you sharing audio? Because we can't hear it. Thank you. Hold on. I have it pulled up too, if you want me to yeah, do it. I'm ready to roll, I think. Uh, give me one second, sorry about that. I forgot to optimize the sound. I'm excited to get a chance to share with you a little bit on this topic, because this is pretty personal. Um, personal for me, I think that uh, each and every one of us have had uh, a, a time in our life when we needed to kind of go back and Kind of sharpen our story, if you will. Um, and I'd just like to know, you know, if you have ever said the words, maybe after you got done staring, sharing your story, or maybe you thought the words, um, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Would you put me in the chat? Is there anybody else that's been saying that line? I know that sometimes people get nervous when they share their story, and <laughs> they they oftentimes will end with, and that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. And some of you are stuck. You're stuck with a story that you don't like. Maybe you're stuck with a story that 
is uh, was true at one point, but it's no longer true. So you feel inauthentic sharing your story and you have maybe lost the love of sharing with other people because your story just isn't sharp. And, you know, I love this quote from Abraham Lincoln that says, give me six hours to chop down a tree and I will spend the first four sharpening the ax. And if we could think about the idea of the heart work or the hard work of coaching and, and reaching out to people and, and starting conversations and finding out what's going on in other people's lives and sharing our story, which is the exact um, thing we've talked about the last couple of weeks is identifying an approach. Now we're moving towards the um, sharing our story and, and presenting what it is that we do and how we do it and how it can help other people. And, you know, if you were to kind of connect the analogy is that you have been chopping a tree with a dull ax. And you're not seeing progress. You're you're not seeing the the results that come from it, and therefore, maybe um, you're exhausted, or maybe you're a new coach, and um, maybe you're a coach that doesn't really have a big weight loss story, and you're telling yourself, "I don't really have a good story. I don't have a story. I don't have a weight loss story," and that can be a dull ax. And you can not share your story and not see the progress and not accomplish things because you're simply just not sharpening that story and you know the reality of it is is that all of us can sharpen our story all of us have a story each and every one of us has a story you have a story and if you don't believe it it's because you have chosen not to believe it and just to kind of give you walk, a walk through this is a great little exercise i want you to look around your room look around wherever you are and i want you to notice everything that is brown look around the room and notice anything that is brown okay you got a few things Maybe there's some things that are not brown, but you can kind of say that they're brown. So close your eyes and then tell me what was red in your room. You see, we oftentimes can't identify. I know it's hard to find things because you were looking for things that were brown and now you are trying to think of things that were red and you can't see them because you weren't looking for red things. You were looking for brown things. And I think that a lot of us are in a position where we are looking at the wrong thing. And so I don't know where you're at with your story. Um, I'd love to have Chris pull up the poll really quick. You know, if you're in the wow factor, you know, your story is just exciting. It's exciting to you. It's when other people hear your story, they go, wow. And there is a season for most of us that have had a weight loss story. I lost 100 pounds 15 years ago. And people looked at me and they said, wow, I didn't even recognize you. Wow, you've lost a lot of weight. How much have you lost? It was so natural for me. I didn't really need to tell a story. Sometimes I just posted a picture or shared a picture of things, and I didn't even need to tell a story. My story was already a wow factor without ever having to sharpen it. It was just simply because of the process. And maybe some of you are in that wow factor. Maybe you're so stinking excited about your, your program, your progress, and the people that you're spending time with. Um, cast your vote if you wouldn't mind. I'd love to see you. Are you in the wow factor? Are you in the wow eh, it's kind of been good but it's not that great and yeah it's not as good as other people and you're not really that excited to share it or maybe you're in the position where you're saying how how could i have gotten to this point how can i share my story i don't even have a story i don't have a story that's worth sharing people are not going to want to hear my story where would you rank yourself i would love to see it in the chat and i'm going to ask chris to leave that chat up as we talk through this so maybe you're in this position where you got started on the program and things have gone well. And maybe you got to a point where things started going the opposite direction and things are not going well. And maybe you're down here or maybe you're down here. Maybe you went all the way back to where you started. You had clients and now you don't have any clients or you were at a certain rank and now you're not at a certain rank. Or you had a physical or mental challenge that led you to dip below the line and you stayed there. Or maybe you're in a position where you return back to where you've been, but you're not farther along and you're shooting on yourself, right? I should be farther along by this point. Or maybe you are in a position where you've had some accomplishments, but now you're back here again and you're down below where you were before. Or maybe you're down a little lower. Or maybe you're at a point where you are just doing fantastic. Well, this is a jot or downer. Keep working and you will see that your new lows become higher than your old highs. Let me read that again. Keep working and you will see your new lows being higher than your old highs. 
And so if you will take if you will change the story that you're telling yourself about this story, right? If let me just ask you the question, at any point in time, was this person a failure? Put it in the chat. Do you believe that at any point in time this person was a failure? I'd say no. I'd say the only reason why this person would be considered a failure is if they quit at any point in time. That's how they fail. They don't necessarily fail if they are in the journey. And if a person on day, whatever this says, 5,000 goes higher than they have ever gone before, they have achieved success, right? And sometimes we reach peaks, but we also experience valleys. And sorry to let you in on the new news for those of you that are new that you thought that Optavia and the Habits of Health were gonna solve all your problems and you're gonna have a straight line from where you were to where you've been. I'm sorry to disappoint you. Life doesn't work like that and neither does Optavia. But what are you telling yourself about the past, present and future story? You know, you can't ever become who you want to be if you're too attached to who you've been. And some of you have been attached too much. You have got to get to the point where you get rid of the idea that your story is based upon your weight loss five years ago or five months ago or a, a, ten, a decade ago. Mine happened 15 years ago. And letting go of weight loss as my only story was a challenge. I had to get back to work. I had to sharpen that. I had to spend some time on it. And my wife has this comment. I don't know who made it up, but, you know, she, when people are living in their past or like living in their high school years, you know, she says, close the yearbook. Like if your best days are behind you, close the yearbook. You're the author, narrator and publisher of your future story. So, you know, I have this uh, journal and, and you could consider this journal. Let me take my screen share off. Um, this is a book, right? This is my story. If I shared this story with you, how excited would you be, right? And if I filled this page up or filled these pages up with a bunch of negativity and a bunch of limiting beliefs and, and uh, negative news, a bunch of drama, a bunch of trauma, it could be true that that's the story. But you know when the story gets better? You know what, what they make movies about is when the hero overcomes the drama and the trauma. They don't allow the negativity to define their future. They actually create a better future and that's the story and that's why they write books and make movies about people that have had huge drama and trauma that overcame it and that could be you as well but you have to become the author and narrator and publisher of your future story and so i want to just challenge you to walk through this process with me and i'd really encourage you to connect with your business mentorship team because this is not an event you can't come to this event and walk away with a better story it's a process and, you know, I've been doing this for 15 years, coaching, you know, a lot of people through this process and program, reach the rank of I integrated presidential director. And I have multiple different stories that I can tell people now because I have worked on my story. I, it's a mastering of a fundamental. So how we grow in Optavia is we get good at the fundamentals of identifying, approaching, presenting, following up, starting up and coaching up. And one of those um, fundamentals, approach and, and uh, present, oftentimes has to do with a story and what stories you can tell people. So I gave this link and, and Chris can put it in the chat. Um, it's just a little way to kind of organize your story and help you to create the story of, of, of a story that's exciting for you to share. And I highly encourage you to do this on the American Heart Month and Love Month, you know, Valentine's Month. Um, get back to the love of what you decided to do when you became a coach. Get back to the heart of the matter, you're right? Whatever you treasure there, your heart will be also. So let's just focus in on some things that you treasure. So what I do in this process of creating your story is I help people to think about what were the top things that you or the top three problems that you experienced prior to engaging with Optavia? You could check off any of these things. You can add to this list. This is just not an exhaustive list. It's just a start. And pick out the things that were the problems or the pain. And then move to the point where you're thinking through the mental or the psychological or the emotional pain and problem. You don't have to tell everybody all the details about it, but be true to yourself and identify what were the pains and the problems that I had before I connected with this program in Octavia. And then there's the financial and or the vocational problems. And if you were to identify problems, this could be your beginning of your story. I like to divide the story into three paragraphs. I like to have the problems and the pain that I experienced, 
the person in the program that helped me. And then I like to share the progress that I've made and the purpose of why I'm telling them my story with the, a question at the end of it that leads me to a follow-up conversation. And if you'll take this process and you'll begin to think about what were my pains and problems that I had before this program, and you start writing them down, and then you identify the person that inspired you to start the process. Could be your spouse, your friend, your uh, coach. It could be your community of people. Um, but identify who that person is, because even if you have a terrible story and your story sucks, you can tell the story of somebody that inspired you, and that could be part of your story. Like you could actually be like the total loser who is connected to a total winner, and you could edify that winner and connect people to the winner. And guess what? You can grow your coaching business and be excited to share your story based on the wow factor of your coach or your coach support team, your mentorship team, and not have a good story. You get to choose that if you want to. And then you could share a little bit about how the program helped you. And oftentimes we just use the four components because it's a nice way to present what we offer without feeling like we have to sell it. And if you were to just simply write out a paragraph of who's the person that connected you, what was their story, give them a little bit of a highlight, and then talk about how the program helped you. And then the final section, the third section is, how have you progressed? What has improved? Now, there may be some things that were pains before and they, they improved and then they went back to becoming pains again. That's part of your story. But what are you learning in that process? What are you experiencing mentally? Because again, we offer the trilogy of optimal health and well-being. We're not just one story. So if you've gained weight back or if you have not been happy because you're going through a difficult season like Shauna went through or I went through or any coach has gone through, then you can share something positive about what you're learning because we're transformational leaders. And if you'll break down your story into three sections and you just list a bullet point, right? And you can tell a physical story and not tell the mental and financial. That's the cool thing about your story is that you get to tell whatever story you think would be the best thing to resonate with the person you're talking with. And when you're first starting, you just tell the story that you got. And then as you grow in competency, you can expand your story and start talking about different areas of life. But you could talk about your physical journey, your mental journey, and your uh, financial journey in regards to your pain and your problems. Then you could talk about the person and their journey, whether it's physical, mental, and financial. You could talk about the program and what you loved about the program. And then you could share about how you have progressed and what you're progressing on. And then at the final end, you say, and the reason why I'm sharing my story with you, the reason why I'm sharing it with you is because I because there's 700,000 people that die every year from heart disease, because there's uh, predicted to be 100 million uh, people that are suffering from prediabetes, type 2 diabetes, or diabetes, and they don't call it lipobetes. So I'm trying to get the word out about what's possible. I'm trying to help people. This is the love month. I just love helping people. I have a heart to serve. I have a heart to support people. I don't have a heart to, to sell them what I'm doing, but I have a heart to share what's happened to me and what's happened to other people that I've had a chance to see or help. And I would love to share that with you. Would you be open to hearing a little bit more about what I do? That's the heart of this, this program, and that's the heart of this opportunity, and that's the heart of what it is that we do. And if you will go back to your heart and you will organize your life and your story around what matters most to you, you will, you have, you will have a sharp, sharp story. And that story will help you to make progress again, and you'll fall in love with coaching at a higher level. And if you can begin to talk about what it is that you want to do in the future. If your future is more exciting than your past story, I've learned to transform. If you learn the transformational leadership habit, I lead from the future, I act in the now. I accept responsibility. I embrace the obstacle as the way, just like Shauna did. I seek growth. I embrace obstacles. Wait, I'm sorry, I play above the line. I accept responsibility, I play the level line. I seek growth and I embrace the obstacle as the way. I connect authentically and I cultivate trust. I awaken potential and I transform masterfully. And I deliver extraordinary results. And I, I seek to serve all of mankind. You know those transformational leadership habits? Might just be the thing that you can go out and tell as part of your story. It's been very helpful for me. Wow. 
Man, David Bush with all the good quotes. I loved how he he shared. They call it diabetes, not livabetes. I thought that was such a good a good moment. Um, if you didn't see in the chat, we popped the link in for the document he was talking about, so you can download that and print it and have it. We will also post it with the, with the recording. But uh, we wanted we are going a little bit over, but um, we have our ED call coming up next. And so we just want if you are on, we'd love to just invite you to stay because we want to talk about the things that David mentioned and um, some of the nuggets that he shared. So would love to open it up to the floor. What did you hear from David other than a shout out to Shauna, which was pretty epic, if you ask me? Um, but what did you hear from? From David that really resonated with you and what do you need to do to change your own story? Uh, I'll jump in. Great. I, you know, I think as coaches, especially, you know, maybe for coaches who've been around for a while, we get so caught up in the uh, you know, in the work and, and in the attending training and attending team time. And we get caught up maybe even in the money or the rank. And we've kind of gotten away from really the whole purpose. And the whole purpose of Dr. A was to help people lose weight and improve their health. Right. And I think that's the message I heard. I, I heard this whole thing on Saturday and it, yeah, mate, I, I heard more things today, but, you know, helping people come off diabetes medication, helping people cure their uh, high blood pressure, you know, coming off CPAP machines. I mean, people sleeping with this thing strapped to their face. I mean, and we have the gift. I mean, we've got the goods, right? And just maybe getting back to some of those roots, we shouldn't be embarrassed. We shouldn't feel shameful. We shouldn't care what others think or what they say. We are offering health. And that is, you know, aside from our faith, that's probably the number one thing we can offer somebody. That's great. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Lucy, I see your hands raised. Um, I think what really resonated with me um, is for a while I've been struggling with just what is my, what is my story? Um, it, and, and I knew that it has to be more than the weight loss. I mean, that was over three years ago. And, and I find that Sometimes I don't, if people have, have followed my page, sometimes I don't share a lot about me per se, because I don't know what to say sometimes about me. Um, or when it is about me, it's, I don't know, sometimes it's, it's sharing a pain point that I'm going through. And I know that that is part of my, my story, but sometimes it's just, I, I like the document and I remember this document from before and I, I don't know, it just went over my head. Um, and I've seen this before, but I love the document and it's something for me that I'm going to kind of, I'm going to really take the time to sit down and create a new story um, because I'm not in the same space as I was in three years ago. Um, and I need to somehow figure out how to bring that, the journey of where I am into my story, if that is even making sense. I'm trying to figure it out as I'm even talking now. So I think it's going to be worthwhile um, to go through this exercise, mm -hmm. Lucy. And something I just heard you say, like you said, you, you share some hardships, right? And I love, I didn't hear it the first two times or whatever I listened to this, but at the end, I heard him say, maybe the leadership principles are your story. So like we embrace obstacles as the way I lead from the future. Like these are things that you can 100% attribute to Optavia of what you've learned um, and how you're handling and directing the future, your life these mm -hmm. days. And that can be part of the story mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. And it yeah. really shows it on such a big, such a bigger level. That's so cool. All right. Cause I'm not the same person I was three years ago. I'm really not. That's your not story. even the same person I was a year ago. How beautiful is that? Yeah, it is. Love it. Debbie, I saw your hand up. Okay, sorry. Yeah, so I um I have never struggled with my health before. And now that I've hit 
the beginning of the menopause journey, um, I'm suddenly putting on weight and I'm suddenly losing, you know, muscle tone and all the things. And so I have felt really bad about it because I'm like, well, I'm blaming myself because I'm not getting up and moving. Um, and I actually had a really interesting appointment with my friend who's also a nurse practitioner and she, we talked about it and I was telling her, well, I am, you know, gaining weight, but I'm also not exercising, you know, so I was trying to say, okay, but part of it might not be, you know, biologically what's happening, but more behaviorally what's happening. And she pointed out, you know what, though, all of those things are connected. Like maybe you're not working out because you don't feel good because you're so tired because you're serotonin, da, da, da. so like everything's connected. And so like, it's been really powerful to me to see like Shauna today was talking about where she's, you know, what she's been through. And then David was talking and I was like, I am not the only one, you know, so it's very, um, it's empowering, I think, to me to think, okay, I'm not alone. This is something that we all do. And so everybody else is getting back up and moving. And so I can too. And so I just kind of, I'm inspired by this whole meeting that we just had. So thank you guys. Thank you, Debbie. Yeah, you know what, we um, actually we're gonna have Stephanie Nelson um, who's speaking next week on the call. We were gonna have her tonight. And I don't know, like something in us, just like Meg and I both are like, our intuition was like, we need to come together as a group like this. I think a lot of us are feeling this. So um, thanks for sharing that, Debbie, and how you're, you know, and how helpful that this was to you to be able to start that evolution for yourself. So good. Thanks. Uh, Michelle. Yeah, thanks. Um, I think this was you know, one of the things that struck me besides creating, I, and I'm really resonating with what Lucy said, I, you know, you're not the same person, you know, down the, you know, three and a half, almost four years in June for me, you know, that I was when I started. And, and I loved what that graphic that he showed us about that our, our, our lows are higher than the highs that we used to have, you know, what a great way to reframe our journeys. You know, that even when I think about, you know, yeah, I've been struggling with 10 pounds back and forth, you know, for whatever, but gosh, it used to be 78 pounds struggling. You know what I mean? Like 90 pounds. It's it's just so, it's a, a different uh, reframing of the things that we go through, the stories that we tell ourselves and how we, we look at things, you know, and that, that was just so powerful, that graphic and, um, and I don't remember seeing that graphic about the re redoing your story. So I think that's really awesome. It's a great, I wasn't able to be on Saturday. So I'm, I'm definitely going to go back and watch, you know, this. So it was really, really good. It was, it was a great way of, of looking at things and just reframing things so that we're telling ourselves more of the truth than for where we're at. You know what I mean? Instead of relying on this story that says who we were, but where are we at right now? And you know, and what are the victories that we've had and, and redoing our stories, just like we have to revisit our whys as we progress in our journey, right? We have to keep evolving. So it was really so very good. true. Thanks. So for very true. I love, I thought that David uh, phrased it so well. I hope you heard him say like, what story are you attaching to your story? Right. And he said, what story are you attaching to whether or not somebody would want to hear your story? Um, I saw something from Peter Crone today. He's like a mindset architect. And he was talking to somebody and this woman was kind of saying these things about herself. She was an emotional eater. She was did, 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 whatever, whatever. And he said, um, and what part of that is true? And she said, well, all of it, whatever. And he kind of paused for a second and he said, really, what part of that is true? And really none of it was, it was just the narrative she got going in her head. And if I can get that clip, I'll put it in, in coaches. Um, and I think that this is, I don't know, like I, the way he also phrased it, and this happened from something else that was said on Saturday in the training, but getting back to the roots, you guys, of what we're truly doing, right? When David said like, we're not sharing this because we think you might want to lose 20, 20 pounds. Like we're sharing this because so many of the population are, you know, it's American Heart Month, right? Or so many are dying from heart disease. I'm sharing what's possible, right? Like there are so many, I mean, it doesn't have to be American Heart Month to be saying that, but the, that's the platform we're on, you guys. And I think, I know even myself, I've kind of lost sight of that. 
for a bit, got kind of caught up. I loved when he said, let's close the yearbook, right? We can start looking back and what was going on then and whatnot, but it's not. We're the author, creator, and narrative of what happens going forward. So raise your virtual hand if you will be willing to commit to write, rewrite your story, actually write it out. Use that worksheet, write it out, and share it with your coach. Raise your virtual hand if you're willing to do that. Awesome. Look at this. 18 of us, 20 of us. I know I had a hard time finding mine to raise it to. <laughs> 20 of us are committing. Yeah. 21. Awesome. I feel like an auctioneer. 22. 23. Look at that. Good. And you know what? If you're struggling with it or struggling with the challenge, you know what we talked about unhealthy <laughs> grows in the dark. Um, maybe talk to your talk to your coach about it. Like, why am I struggling with with doing this? What's my resistance around it? It's just something to be curious about. Um, so, so I think Meg, you got anything to add around around this topic before we move on? No, I would just encourage you, like when when you write your story, to share it. Share it with your mentors, share it to, if you've got a pod or a group that you, you know, that you coach alongside of, share it with other people and let them give you that bit of encouragement. Um, Cause I really, and if, and if you're not raising your hand and I know I'm, I'm not even raising my hand anymore. So I know we, we stopped doing that, but if you're not raising your hand, maybe be curious about why maybe you've got some shame and you need to be reminded that, um, fail. It's, it's not a failure to struggle. Like Emily put in the chat, right? Like our struggles actually make us more beautiful. So that's the thing that comes to my mind. Yeah. I have a thing in my stories I posted and there's a big dartboard and, um, you know, one of the darts is completely off the dartboard. Nothing is near the bullseye, right? It's all over. And it said, this is not failure. And failure was the blank, um, dartboard with nothing you know, the blank target with nothing aimed at it. So um, super encouraged, super, super proud of all of us. Um, you know, we're in this together and we are more alike than different. You know, it's so easy to feel alone, to get caught up in our, in our thought processes, but kind of coming together like this and sharing. And then once you do come up with your story, you know, put it out there put it out, you know, in various ways. And you want find ways to talk about this again, like you used to when you were super passionate, right? It always found its way into conversations. It found its way on your social media page and that sort of thing. So, so good. Well, we, um, curious, did anybody have any questions around the summer event? Um, we announced that during team time and kind of the qualifications around that. And if everyone wants to lower your virtual hand, if you don't have a question, that might be helpful. And if you aren't, uh, that's kind of the, the end of our um, team call. So if you um, are on for the team call and not the ED call, feel free to hop off or feel free to join us if you'd like. So just wanted to mention that. Okay, Ruth, do you still have your virtual hand raised because you have a question? She quickly looks to lower it. <laughs> Are you okay? You okay? Okay, we can lower it down. Okay. And how about you, Michelle? No, I had a question. Um, I mean, I did take a screenshot of the slide and I was looking at it, but um, this is in place of convention. Is that what you're saying? Okay. And... Um, I saw that they were looking at a virtual option as well. So it will be part part in person, part virtual, or could the be virtual is only going to be for new coaches that come on um, for a certain time period. I can try to pull that slide up again. Okay. Um, it's for the newer coaches that like let's say a coach came on in June and didn't have time to meet those qualifications that they could watch it virtually. But for those of us that um that just don't qualify or or want to choose not to travel it's not going to be an option virtually okay 
Now, is it still going to be in Atlanta or are they looking at other places? No, we, yeah, we're, they're under contract in Atlanta. So um, they're uh, we're under contract for, I think, a couple more years. So it will still be here. As far as I know, it will still be here. And again, the, the reason that we were told when I was on one of the IPD calls was that um, they really want to spend this time in the value. They know that people are investing, they're traveling. Um, we have so many virtual events now where people can grasp the big picture and the mission. Um, this will be more um, of a specified training that we'll be able to do for this level. Um, and also the recognition and the the, the uh, camaraderie of being able to, to be at, at a qualifying event is really special. Do you think this will be a trend moving forward or do you think it's just for this time and season that we're in? Yeah, honestly, not sure, Michelle. Uh, like, uh, like I said, and um, we haven't heard final on it. Like I said, th this had come out as an announcement. We were kind of waiting you know, on a leadership call and we were kind of waiting to see for an official announcement, didn't see it. And then Meg and I talked about it and we thought, well, we're going to put it out there, right? Even if, if it gets revised, that will be, all of us will be growing <laughs> and helping more people and growing our businesses no matter what. But, um, but yeah, I, I think the company, you know, um, the world's change, business changes, you know, needs change. And I think they're trying to adapt. Okay. I give them credit for not just doing the same old, same old, you know, the, for, for trying something new. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't, I'm not, I don't have a feeling one way or the other about that at the moment. I mean, I, I think it's kind of exciting to have to qualify for something. Do you know what I mean? Like, I just take it to a different level. Um, and when you feel like you've earned something, but, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I appreciate that about our company anyway, that they're always evolving and they're not stagnant, you know, they're always trying to meet the needs. So that's good. Yeah. And like I said, as we bring on those new coaches, new coaches that you bring on right now, that 2000 FQB, they're going to be earning that client support bonus anyway, right? Because they're going to be adding clients and whatnot. So many of our new, anybody who's coming on in the next you know, couple of months is going to likely qualify to be able to attend in person. And then just those ones probably that come on towards the end um, will be a different opportunity. Questions around that? We really want this to be um, our space, so we can we can chat about um, that. If you have any more questions, we're excited about that incentive to be able to do some additional rewards in the team. Um, but what do you what do you need? What do you think maybe our our clients need, our team needs? We want your voice. Vicki? I, I am still, I can't, I mean, like I'm, I just heard about the, um, um, the qualifications for the, whatever, whatever they're calling the X convention. Um, no more event. And, yeah, um, and so I kind of knew that and that's, that's just kind of over here. It's kind of mulling around over here, but I am so so moved and still so focused on what uh, David Bush was saying. I just, um, I mean, I'm sitting here thinking about all those things before I originally went on plan that really bothered me about my health. And, um, and, mm -hmm. and if I can say this and I don't want to, I don't want to embarrass you at all, Shauna, but you know, you and I had a conversation not that long ago and you were talking about your discomfort with creating posts and sharing them. And right after that, you started sharing these amazing posts. And I was like, wow, I don't know what you did differently, but that's amazing. And shame on me for not tapping you on the shoulder about that earlier, but I just, and now I know why, um, you know, like why you're able to do that and what's going on. It just, anyway. So grateful that you shared that and it's playing right into kind of a, a personal goal I had set uh, for myself starting in February anyway, that, um, and that's to watch the Saturday recordings because Saturday mornings are just hard for me, but to set a time, put it on my calendar, follow through and watch them. And, and I'm not good at that. And it's silly not to be good at that. So um, anyway, just, I just so grateful that 
that that was there and it got my mind going in such a different direction and Meg like you when he said they don't call it livabetes they call it diabetes I'm like yeah <laughs> you know so anyway just all just really really good I love his he, it's like he has become a different person and uh, I love hearing him talk now yeah, and look at David's face, et cetera. He totally jumped back in, revamped his health, revamped his mindset. I know David well, and he had gotten in kind of a negative place for a while and mm -hmm. sat there for a while. And he is back and stronger than ever. And that, that's what, really why we wanted you to hear from him too, mm -hmm. right? Like such a great example of somebody, he's been around longer than I have, I think 15 years um, doing this. So I think that's that's great. Answering a quick question in the chat. So Beth, I think you were asking, I think we had heard of it might, there might be an um, ED event in Orlando in March, and um, that is not gonna take place. Um, just so you guys are aware, Dr. A and Dan are gonna be on a, what they call a momentum tour. Um, these are gonna be one day events at various locations throughout the country. Um, as of right now, the closest one is in Orlando uh, for those of us that live in the Southeast, but he's coming to different parts of the country. So he may be coming near you. Um, I'm attending a meeting on Wednesday to learn more about that. Um, I will do my best to see if we can get them to Atlanta <laughs> at some point. But um, um, but I had a conversation with Dan Bell the other day. And so they've got their initial um, plan, but, but but definitely may expand on it. So. And I right. just wanted to jump in here real quick, D. Um, the first place they're going is going to be Arizona. So Connie and Renee, I know y'all could, y'all are going to get to see them first, which would be great. But you said something, Vicki, like, man, it's so it's silly of me to not be good at getting on on Saturday mornings. And I want you to know it's not silly of you. It's it's all of us. Right. It's it's when we watch via webinar, it's so hard because we feel alone. Right. So um, Dee and I have been talking about that. And one of the things that I'm not a gr doing a great job of is being on the eight o'clock calls. Right. Um, the, the big client community calls like eight o'clock happens. I get tired. I put the kids to bed, whatever. So we're going to start doing watch parties. So similar to what we did with David Bush, you know, we're going to watch them live through zoom so that we can help hold each other accountable for the people that know like, Hey, yes, this is going to be good for me. I know being on, cause the Monday night calls every time I'm on them, they're great. I don't know what the resistance is in me other than life happens and I have excuses. So knowing that I'm going to be accountable makes it makes me more likely to be there. So wanted to just give you that um, information, Vicki, and tell you, we might even do that on Saturdays. We'll see. Yeah. There's, and there's such a parallel. I have the same resistance. I don't know what it is about <laughs> getting on them, but I'm excited about doing it together. Right. And and whatnot. And there is um, definitely evidence that when we are leading and we're on those calls, you will start to see an increase in your clients participating as well. Like if you're thinking my clients are not plugged in or whatever, remember your clients are always going to mirror what you're doing. So, um, cause you're going to have more conversation topics, more reasons to say, Hey, this is why it would be a value to plug in, you know, et cetera. So um, I think we've got time for Connie and for Monica. So Connie, you want to go ahead? Yeah, I do. Um, this has been great. Um, what just came up is, I know y'all are going to have watch parties, but is there a way to live stream those community things? Like, because, you know, people stayed on as we, as this went over the half hour. And if we could just like stream that right into our coach team call every week, so that like, God, you know, okay, so who's getting off? <laughs> you know, it's like, no, I want to be seen on the call so is there a way for that to happen I don't know I'm not that techie with that um and the other thing is is that um when Dave shared that first um quote about the axe Abraham Lincoln you know you can you know but if you don't sharpen your axe you know you're not going to be you're going to be chopping with this dull axe and um and that came out of the the one word book the word by John Gibson. I think that's who the author is. And we've all been doing the word of the year and y'all did it all in person. But in that little book, he talks about, and it's, it's a faith-based book, you know, looking in and looking up and finding that word. 
but it has been used by like universities, companies, all kinds of things to get their one word. And championship teams have a team word that they focus on. And I would like to propose to have a conversation with someone about us finding our word for the rest of this year that we focus on. Hey, I'm totally, totally game for that. Yeah, maybe we'll do a post and people can um, share ideas in our okay. group about it. I'll put, the, I'll put the book in the group. I'll put the book in the group. It takes 40 minutes to listen to it. And mm -hmm. it's amazing and it's easy to do. So anyway. There's a great book. Um, I can't think of his name. It's escaping me right now, but it's called Four F O R, and um, Jeff Henderson, and he's one of the pastors in the North in the North Point Community Church area. But when he was building this Gwinnett campus, which is one of the biggest in Atlanta, um, his whole mission was like, "What do we stand for? Who are we for? What do we want?" You know, and they just chose the word for. So, and like ever, they had signs all over the place, and he wrote this book about. But but the book was, "What are you for?" Right. So as a team, what are we for? What are we, you know, what is our mission? I love that, Connie. Yeah. And as far as the live stream, we can't like, I can't, I tried on Saturday. I can't take it out of the coach training group and like live stream it into our coach group where it's just running in the coach group. But what we're thinking about doing is opening up this team time zoom on Saturday, join in just like this. And then I could open it up through Facebook and we could watch it like this. So we could still be in yeah, and then we could do a little, um, you know, <clears throat> watch party or conversation even, or afterwards. the monday or the monday night community call too mm -hmm. that's what we're gonna do that's what we're gonna do yeah excellent yeah. okay thanks yeah we'll start it after probably after we have stephanie on next week because she may run over okay well good we'll get to wrap it up with you monica glad you raised your hand yeah, I'll go quick. Um, no, don't worry. I think two things that I took away from David was, um, you know, my story has all been about weight loss and you're just riding that wave. And then now it's been, you know, almost four years for me as well. And I've been up and down too. And so I noticed, I just had an epiphany that all of my clients are all about weight loss. They're just definitely diet mentality. And I think that is a little bit of a product of what they learned from me because that's where my mindset is. But even though, like Lucy said, um, there's so much more that I've gained from this whole thing and I'm, I'm a much different person. So I'm going to really focus on getting away from the number and the scale and, and all the other things that come that we don't share because we think it's not as sexy or as exciting. Right. But it's amazing. And I think that's what I, I want to really focus on that. And the other thing I just wanted to say was, um, that journey, the up and down, it, it really, it resonates with me, but I don't know about you guys, but when, when it's awesome, when you're at that top, of one of those peaks, but when you get down to the bottom, like, what do we do to keep up energy? Because climbing back up is really, really tough. So just want to shout out and see what others are doing for that. Because when you get down to the bottom of one of those little peaks and valleys, it's, it's, it's tough. So. Yeah. I mean, we can take a minute if anybody wants to pipe in, because I think we've, we've all hit it at mm -hmm. some point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you want to speak on that particular topic, Rebecca? Like, what do you do when you hit the bottom? Well, I was kind of thinking, I was hoping to go to convention, <laughs> you know, and you absolutely yeah. can. I know, I know. Um, I'm trying to just know that tonight is an off night for me. I'm, I'm extremely tired. I'm about to change jobs again because I'm tired from working at home. And I had it in, in my head that, you know, Amy and I were going to go to convention this year and, and that's not completely out, but this does feel like for me, I, I just want to say like, I'm going to struggle for a little minute on this. Cause I thought we were, you know, the sake of being coaches would be enough for us to be able to go there and build off that um, in-person energy that I got this last time that I went. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll do, I'll have to be working on that, but that's what I would have been looking forward to, to pull myself out of the trough. I gotcha. I gotcha. And thanks for being honest. And you know what? I think we have to process emotions, right? That's one of the biggest things that we learn <clears throat> is do sit in the disappointment, right? Let yourself feel it, whatever, and process it in a healthy way. Um, and then as Dr. A would always say like, okay, now, now what? what's next, right? And the best we can do is continue those actions, right? Again, 
it may change, whatever. We're giving you the information we have now. Um, but I appreciate your honesty on that. Connie, did you have one last thing or? Did I do have just one last thing. Um, there's always a low below the low, you know. <laughs> so, you know, and, um, and so failure or where you are in the low is a launching pad for the next success. Life is not a straight line from A to B. David also said that. And if you look at a chart and do your life from A to B and you look at the highs and you look at the lows, every time there was a low, even though it wasn't as low, you know, as it was before, the next high is always greater, especially when you're in a team of people like this and you can, throw, you know, grow along each other's energy. And that's what I've gotten tonight. But it's not perfection. And we're always going to be around that target that you talked about. But, you know, set your sights on what the next high can be. And, and know that it's an arrow, you know, and it's going up. So um, if you've been down, the only way to go is up. It's universal law of gravity. What goes down has got to go up. Lots of great things listed there in the comments. I mean, number one thing, and you guys, I'm preaching to the choir, is staying connected. You know, I think the power of our community and connection and authenticity is so important. So stay stay connected, keep it real. Um, um, you can go in the pit, but we can't stay there, right? Like we, we can go in there, give yourself six seconds and then come back out was what I was told. But, um, but stay connected, talk to your mentor, right? And um, like David said, when we closed our eyes and we thought about what was brown in the room and then we opened our eyes and he said, what was red? You had no clue because you were focused solely on the brown. So there's gratitude is always so important. What can we be grateful for? Um, and, um, and then, you know, working with your mentor, like not, not keeping that bottled up because that's when it gets unhealthy because our own, we can ruminate and we go down rabbit holes and we start, we start attaching stories to it said from somebody with 13 years of experience <laughs> of ruminating and going down rabbit holes. All right. Well, thank you guys for investing your time in yourself tonight for being here. I'm glad that you got such great value. I know that I did. Um, go ahead and mark your calendar for reoccurring for the first Monday, <clears throat> the leadership call eight to eight thirty after, so that you've got it in your calendar. So we we know going forward, we know we've been it's been a little messed up with the holidays and the time change. So all right, we love you guys. Can't wait to see your new stories. Bye.